I have a queue. It returns a promise, and you have to hand it a promise factory. When they call the promise factory, your job gets to execute. The async request queue can only have up to three uh, running tasks at any one time. Implement it. Is it okay if I just used an array instead of a queue? I know it's going to be less performant, but just for simplicity's sake. For simplicity, let's go. So I'm gonna try to solve this interview question that the PrimeGen has put forth here. For full transparency, I've worked through a solution and I've come up with some notes of things that I'm going to talk to. The reason I've done that is because I want you to get the most out of this as possible. So what is it that he wants us to do here? So he wants us to make an async request queue. So he has a queue that returns a promise. You have to hand this queue a promise factory. So hand it a promise factory. When the promise factory is called, the task gets executed. And we can only have three tasks running at a time. So limit of three tasks running at a time. Okay, so let's just go through some things that we know to be true. So the first thing we know is what a queue is. So a queue is a data structure that has two methods on it. One is called NQ and then one is called DQ. So NQ is going to put an item onto the queue and then we can DQ that item and take it off. A queue is like a line for say a movie cinema. You're gonna line up for tickets. The first person in the line is going to be served first. The last person in the line is going to be served last and everyone in between is going to be served in order in which they join the queue. So we often call this first in first out. So this is FIFO. First in, first out. We know it has two methods, as we mentioned. Two methods. And Q and DQ. So I think we're only going to have to implement the NQ, and we probably are not going to have to implement a DQ method here. Well, we're going to implement a method that does DQing, but it's not really going to be a DQ method. And what is the other thing that we know? We can see here that it should take a promise factory. So we need to know what a factory is. So a factory is a function that returns a new object or function every time it's called every time we call this factory, it should return a new object or a new function. In our case, we know that our factory should return a promise. Okay, so what are some things that, okay, so what are the thing, so what are some things that we should know about async code? So async, well, we know that it should be non-blocking. You can see here that we have a limit of three tasks. I'm so you can see here that we have a limit of three tasks, but we should be executing these three tasks simultaneously. We shouldn't execute one, wait for that to finish, execute the next, wait for that to finish, execute the next, and then wait for that to finish. So each task should be non-blocking. Okay, so I think the last thing to do is to talk about some pseudocode for how this might work. So I think the next step here is to talk about some pseudocode. So the first thing that we want to do is to enqueue a task, to so enqueue a task. When we enqueue a task, we need to check if we can actually execute that task, because you can see here that we have a limit of three tasks running at any one time. So we can say if limit is below three, increment the limit by one and execute the task. If it's not, so if we already have three tasks running, then we need to push the task to our queue. And then once we're finished running the task, we can check to see if there is anything else on the queue. So if we've finished a task, we need to go back to our queue and say, hey, is there anything else that has been put on the queue because I can execute that now because I've just freed up one position. So I'm going to be using a class for this, but you can probably also just use a function if you like as well. So I'm gonna say class async request queue. So we need to have a constructor and our constructor is going to have three properties on it. So I'm gonna say this dot 
Q is equal to an array. This dot running task is equal to zero. So we're just going to initialize our running task to zero. And then we're going to increment and decrement this as our queue gets used. And then the next property I want is this dot max concurrent task is equal to three. The reason we're going to set a property here and not just a constant on the class is because you may want to create a setter here so you can increase this to up the workload or decrease it as you need. Okay, so we're going to implement the first method. This is going to be NQ. And we know that NQ should take a promise factory. So could we just execute this promise factory? So let's say await promise factory. There we go, we're done. We make this an async function. So this might work, but we need to implement some functionality to increase the running task and adhere to our max concurrent task here. So let's say const task is equal to an async function. And then we need to put our promise factory inside of here. And then I'm going to say this dot running task plus plus. We have one little problem here, and that is if this promise factory throws, then we're not going to catch that error. And we're never going to decrement this running task here. So let's say try. Finally, so we want to be able to decrement the running task despite whether our function succeeds or it catches an error. So I'm going to say this dot running task minus minus. So you may be wondering why I used a constant here instead of the function keyword. The reason is because we need a reference to this here. And if we use the function keyword, so say we did function task, then this function here would create its own reference to this. And we would not be able to reference this dot running task. One way that I like to think about this is these little gaps here, the this reference can get through those gaps into our function. It's a bit silly, but it works. Okay, so now we need to say if our running task is less than our max concurrent task, then we can execute this task here. So let's say if this dot running task is less than our this dot max concurrent task, then we can just execute our task here. Else, we need to push our task onto the queue. So let's say this dot queue dot push, and we can just push our task on. So when we finish running a task, we need a way to go back and check our queue to say, hey, is there anything else here that I can execute? So we need a function here called try to execute. And this actually doesn't need to be an async function. So I'm just going to remove that. And then when we decrement our task here, I can call this this dot try to execute. So this needs to do two checks. One, if we have no tasks in the queue here, then just return. We don't need to do anything. But if our running task is equal to, or it should never actually be greater than, but we should check that anyway. If it is equal to or greater than our max and current task, then we also need to return. So let's say if queue.length is equal to zero, or this dot running task is greater than or equal to this dot max concurrent task, then we can just return here. Otherwise, we need to get the next task on the queue and we need to execute it. So let's say const next task is equal to this dot queue dot shift. And then we just can execute our next task here. Okay, so let's go try this out. So the first thing I want to do is to import our async request queue, which I don't think I've exported. So let's export this async request queue. And then we need to create a new instance of our queue. So let's say const queue is equal to new async request queue. The next thing we need to do is to create a promise factory. So I'm going to say function promise factory. And then this is going to return an async function because an async function returns a promise. I'm also going to use this function here to get a random number between our min and max. And then this is just going to simulate some work that we're doing. Let's say const our weight is equal to get random number. And we're just going to wait between one and say five seconds. Console.log 
Our promise factory here needs to take an index as well. So I'm going to say console.log running task. And then the task that we're running is going to be our index here. And then we're going to say waiting for our wait divided by 1000 seconds. And then I'm just going to create a delay here to simulate some random work. So I'm going to say await new promise. We're going to take a resolve function. Then we're going to set a timeout. Inside of our timeout, we're going to resolve after our random number of seconds. Okay, so let's copy this line here. Say finished task, and then we can get rid of this line as well. Okay, so now we need to enqueue this promise factory. So I'm going to say queue.enqueue, a promise factory, and then we need to pass in an index. So I'm just going to say one and create a few instances of this, two, three, four, five, six. Let's create a seventh. Now let's run this. So I'm going to say node queue.tests MJS. Okay, so let's have a look at what's happening here. So we're running task one, two, and three. This is exactly what we expect to happen. We're going to wait till task one is finished. And when task one is finished, we can now take task four off the queue and start executing that. When task three finishes, we can take that off and we can start executing task five. So you'll notice here that we finished task three before we finished task two. And the reason for that is because task two takes 3.755 seconds, where task three almost took three seconds. And so we can finish task three before task two has finished. And you can see that we get the same here. We finished task seven before we finished task six. So that is how to implement the Primogen's async request queue. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up. And if you're the Primogen, please be honest and tell me how I did. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.